Welcome to Developing for Assistant Across Devices. I'm Jessica, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer for Google. Hi, I'm Tony, and I'm also a Developer Relations Engineer for Google. Android apps are already helpful every day for users. Integrating your app with Google Assistant through App Actions can extend this helpfulness even further. App Actions allows users to launch and control Android apps with their voice, so they could say something like, hey Google, order a pizza from example app to Assistant, and the Android app will not only open the Android app, but also to the section of the app that they could start their order. We've brought the Assistant and Android closer together to make it easier for developers to quickly develop and test voice integrations for their app. By implementing app actions, you could streamline user journeys where a user can share key information using their voice and be dropped into the correct section of the app along with any parameters provided. This also helps eliminate the issue of searching through the dreaded sea of icons. When a user queries Assistant without using the brand name of a specific app, Assistant can now infer what app would best fulfill the user's requests and effectively route the user to that app. This is called brandless query. By implementing app actions, Assistant can surface your app content to users. If a user triggers the proper Assistant query for the functionality of your app, even if your app isn't installed yet, Assistant can provide app install suggestions. Assistant can automatically direct users to your Play Store listing to encourage them to install the app and access full functionality. Dynamic shortcuts let users jump into personalized place or bit of content in your app based on prior actions. These shortcuts are created at runtime and can be personalized to the user. Also, during contextually relevant times, Assistant can proactively suggest your Android dynamic shortcuts to users, displaying it on Assistant-enabled devices. For example, if you're building a note-taking app, you may want to push dynamic shortcuts based on the names given of the notes that your users create. For the most critical user journeys, you can suggest the user to create an assistant shortcut in your app, which is a phrase that triggers a particular shortcut. This is similar to how assistant shortcuts can be created manually by your user, but the in-app promo SDK enables you, the developer, to proactively suggest and implement assistant shortcuts to your users. For example, at the end of purchasing our pizza from the example before, you can offer the user to create an assistant shortcut. So the next time they could say, hey Google, get my usual pizza. The Android app opens with the user's preferred pizza information and it's ready to be ordered. In-app promotion allows developers to initiate the creation of an assistant shortcut by constructing a special deep link that has the app's own deep link parameters inside it. Let's take a closer look at how these user journeys are handled at a high level between the Android app and Google Assistant. You can think about this experience as having two parts. First, processing a user's input and understanding their request, and second, fulfilling the user's request. When the user says, order a pizza from example app, Google Assistant will process the user's input using natural language understanding, or NLU for short. Assistant will figure out what the user wants to do. Then, the app is triggered with the user-defined data and opens to the appropriate app feature to start a pizza order. With that understanding of the high-level architecture, let's dive in and see the differences when developing for voice across different device types like mobile, Wear, and Android for cars. Regardless of your device type that you're developing for, you'll have to build, test, and release your app. We have three different example apps we'll be looking at as we go. A fitness app for Wear, a to-do app for mobile, and a parking app for cars. The first step in building for voice is identifying your app's functionality and expressing that to Assistant. Think about what your app does, what type of functionality it supports. Do you have a game app? Does it have a leadership board? Does your app track workouts? How about searching and viewing news updates? A key concept in machine learning and NLU is intent matching. Intent matching loosely means identifying several pieces of speech pattern for a particular functionality or intention of the user. For our example apps, we'll identify these CUJs and intentions of each device category. Assistant has identified and supports over 60 different intents, which we call built-in intents, or BIIs for short. 
These PIIs are also arranged into several categories. Google builds and maintains language models for BIIs to understand many common variations of queries related to that particular intent. Currently for Wear, we support the health and fitness BIIs. While for Auto, we support transportation BIIs, like Get Parking Facility and Get Charging Station. We can then combine our identified app capabilities with the supported BIIs to start constructing voice capabilities for our sample apps. For Wear, we can use the Start and Stop Exercise BIIs. For Mobile, we can use the Open App feature and Get Thing, which are from our common BI categories. Open App feature allows users to request which list they would like to see, whether it's the completed or active. And Get Thing uses the app search to locate a particular item. Now for cars, we'll use the Get Parking Facility BII. Some BIIs use inline inventories. Inline inventories function like a lookup table for BII parameters, expressing the variety of ways users refer to a feature or content in your app into items identifiers that you define. You'll need to define the exact set of words in the inventory that you want a system to look up for your user's requests. These options are declared statically in your app's configuration. A unique identifier for the option is received at runtime as a parameter of the incoming BII. Let's walk through how this is done. Here we have a user saying, hey Google, open to do and show my active tasks. A system will match the open app feature BII and extract active tasks as feature. Feature is the parameter supported by the open app feature BII. In your inline inventory, you'll want to look up the value active task in your app's configuration and return the unique identifier of active. Finally, triggering your Android app with the open app feature BI capability to get the fulfillment with a parameter feature value of active. Looking again at our example apps, we could start using the inline inventory to clearly to identify features in our apps for our users. For example, Apps on Wear, we'll have the inline inventory item of exercise name. In this example, we're using Run. As shown for our mobile app, we'll have active and completed as our feature inventory items. While for auto apps, we don't need to use an inline inventory. Capabilities are the expression of a relevant feature of an app and contains the built-in intent and fulfillment instructions. Capabilities live in your shortcuts.xml file. Here we have a capability that is tethered to the open app feature BII and our inventory parameter is called feature. To list out what possible values for a feature like active and complete, we'll need to add a shortcut. Within the shortcuts tag, you'll need to add a shortcut for each type of feature. Here we have the shortcut for the active feature. This includes a capability binding tag to the open app feature BII. This tethers this shortcut to the open app feature capability declared previously. Finally, we'll have the parameter binding tag to our array resources that list out the synonyms for the term active. Here's an example of an array resource with the list of synonyms for the term active. It's important to try to capture all the possible synonyms since Assistant treats this as a lookup table. To capture complete as its own feature, you'll need to add another shortcut with the complete task information. Here's a reduced version of the capability and two shortcuts. To have your app know about these capabilities and shortcuts, you'll need to add a metadata tag that points to where your shortcuts files is located and make sure that it's within your activity. There are a few differences when it comes to developing for where and cars to keep in mind. Apps may require additional error notification handling to users depending on the standalone status. Current exercise states are not sent to a system along with the health and fitness BIs. So if your app is not declared standalone, you'll need to build in additional haptic feedback to inform users whether the request was successful or not. While developing apps for cars, you'll need to declare that our car app supports deep links. You can do this by creating an intent filter for deep links in the car app activity. The next step is to tell the assistant how to fulfill the BII that was matched. Now that we have the BII and the inline inventory for features in place, we'll need to add our intent tag to the capability. The intent tag contains the instruction on how to build the intent that will be delivered to the app in order to launch it. 
The parameter tag actually lives inside the intent tag. Note that the naming of parameters between capabilities and shortcuts are important. The capabilities Android name has to match the parameter bindings Android key. Here, we're instructing Assistant to take the parameter named feature from the BII and copy it into the intent extra named feature param. In this example, the to-do app uses the value of open app features feature param to filter the list of to-do items by active. Let's take a look at the fulfillment differences for where and cars. There are several locales supported for the fitness BIIs on where, so developers will need to verify their apps fulfill user requests properly for each supported locale during testing. Android for cars only supports deep links, not Android intents. When handling the deep link, we specify the fulfillment implementation in our car session. If a session is not created, an intent to start the app will create the session and pass the intent in the onCreateScreen method. If a session is already created in memory, the session will reuse the same intent and pass the intent to the onNewIntent method. Here, our auto app gets the value of getChargingStationDeepLink when creating a session. The deep link contains all the parameters matched by the BII, so the app can act on what the user said. Similarly, when a session is already created, the deep link will be passed into on new intent with all the parameters matched by the BII. Here is an example of how an Android app gets the value of get charging station deep link. When it's time to test your app, you can use the Google Assistant plugin through Android Studio to verify your app action integrations are configured correctly. First, you'll need to install the Google Assistant plugin from the plugin marketplace. After the plugin is installed, you can use the App Actions test tool. With the emulator and the app installed, open the App Actions test tool and then create a preview. Then you can select the BII you want to test. For our to do app, we'll do the open app feature and change the feature value to active. Then run App Actions, which will open the to do app to active tests. Normally, Assistant gets a hold of your app's app actions configuration at the time of the app's APK is uploaded to play. It extracts the resources from the bundle and readies itself on the back end to listen for the BIIs from the configuration. The test tool preview is a temporary back end configuration that tells Assistant about the app actions configuration to be used for the specific app for a specific Google user account. This means after the initial upload that proves the developer owns the app, the app doesn't need to be uploaded to play each time testing is required. You can use the test tool to preview your app action configuration for aware devices as well as on auto. Now that you've tested that your app actions integration works, you can request a review and deploy. Before submitting your newly uploaded Android app to the Google Play Console, you'll need to accept the Actions on Google Terms of Service under Pricing and Distribution. The App Actions review does not affect your Android app review and deployment status in Google Play. After the app is approved, the App Actions integrations will be available to users of your published or open test releases. We've covered a lot of details on how to add voice capabilities to your apps. Let's recap briefly. Giving users the ability to engage with your app through voice requires the use of built-in intents, the addition of your app's specific capabilities to shortcuts.xml, how the Assistant should handle fulfilling user queries, and this can all be tested quickly with the Google Assistant plugin. Assistant can also automatically leverage your app actions to help guide users to your app through fulfillment of brandless queries and app install and suggestions, all without any additional development work on your part. And when developing for apps targeted at devices other than mobile, there are just a few differences to remember. If you're ready to start adding voice to your Android apps, check out the developer docs and code labs to get started. On behalf of Jessica and myself, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.